For a company so prevalent across the wasteland and in all Fallout games, you would think that we'd have a better idea about vault Tech's real motives by now. But the truth is, it's hard to say. You see, vault Tech was originally founded as a semi-private enterprise that was given trillions of dollars by the US government to construct vaults that would house and protect the people in the event that the bombs did drop. As we know from the games though, many of these vaults were actually created in order to spawn weird and twisted experiments, to test things like radiation poisoning and what would happen if you gave a large group of people no food and no way to escape. Would they resort to cannibalism? But why was vault Tech even interested in doing these heinous experiments? What benefit would it be to them? Especially if the entire world would have been bombed to oblivion anyways. This is where it gets super interesting. In the original cancelled Fallout 3 Van Buren project, the creator of the vault themselves, Tim Kaine, explained in the original script they were set to have the Enclave looking to find and populate a new planet other than Earth. For those that don't know, the Enclave is a secret group of high-ranking military and political officials that before the bombs dropped, knowing the inevitability of everyone's demise, formed an almost Illuminati-like group of powerful people with their own unknown goals to protect themselves from future Armageddon. This idea about finding a new planet to live on is especially interesting though when we start to dig a little deeper. You see, in Fallout 3, one of the most famous moments in the game is discovering a giant armed nuclear bomb in the middle of a city, and famously players can decide to disarm it and save dozens of lives, or instead opt to detonate it, wiping the small town off the map. But for especially astute players, they may have noticed something very, very strange. If you go up to the bomb in Megaton, you would expect to see a Chinese flag or emblem, as they are the main adversary who bombed the US. But instead we see... vault Tech? We know from terminal entries in the Pentagon in Fallout 3 as well, that the United States counter-launched nukes only after they had indication that birds were in the sky. But they only assumed it was China. There was no actual confirmation anywhere that China actually fired the first nuke. Could it be that vault Tech were the ones who actually launched the first nuke? Considering the cancelled Fallout movie from Interplay had a similar plotline, it certainly was the plan at one point. But why would they do this, you ask? Well, potentially to force people into the vaults they had created in order to perform research. But then naturally the question becomes, to what end was all this research they were doing for? We may get a hint of the answer in the newest entry of Fallout. Fallout 76. You see, in-game we can find a university that was bought out by vault Tech before the bombs dropped, and when it was bought, almost all of the staff were immediately laid off, leaving only high-value engineers and scientists in place. The only other two staff that were kept were two linguists, specifically linguists who were studying the Horse Creek petroglyphs, a real set of weird markings on stones in our real life. Some Reddit and Discord users were able to datamine these glyphs and found that in-game some of the markings can be deciphered and translated to say, Prepare yourself for the destruction of your life by fire when you arrive. Life weakens. Protect what remains of Earth. Is vault Tech's ultimate goal to conquer the stars and make contact with aliens and helping them to do so? all while performing crazy experiments on helpless civilians in order to advance technology towards this goal? We may never know the answer, but I really hope if we don't get a new Fallout anytime soon, Starfield could potentially show us a future remnants of vault Tech on different planets, even if just as an easter egg. The new plague is only briefly mentioned in parts of each of the Fallout games, but is potentially one of, if not the biggest threats to the entire world. Before the Great War that resulted in the Fallout we know today, there were many conflicts going on throughout the world, primarily between the United States and China. And as we travel through each Fallout game, we can find many settlements and journal entries dating back to this period in history. But the most interesting documents we can find on this entire period are references to a mysterious contagion called the New Plague. In the Fallout 3 Point Lookout DLC, for example, we can stumble upon an old American army camp, where if we check the terminals, we can see that the camp was riddled with cases of this so-called New Plague. Victims were showing symptoms of profuse sweating, unexplained contusions or swelling, massive external hemorrhaging, and most terrifying of all, 
new ideas like socialism. In Fallout 4, you have had some small moments where we can hear the characters talk about how they have gotten a new and strange illness with extremely similar symptoms. And in Fallout 1, we even meet a self-aware supercomputer named Zack 1.2 who mentions that the company behind the power suit armors we wear in games was also trying to cure this mysterious virus, but to no avail. So just before the atomic bomb started to drop, there seemed to have been an outbreak of a highly contagious and deadly virus that we only know so little about because right as it started to become a huge issue, the world was cast into nuclear winter. Even more interestingly, if we read all the journal entries regarding the virus in every Fallout game to date, it's discovered that the US government at one point had devoted a large amount of resources to finding a cure to this plague. In the process, they spawned what was called the PVP project, which initially was a study to find a cure that resulted in scientists discovering a way to enhance small animals and rodents, giving them extra strength and intellect, which eventually led into the creation of the FEV or forced evolutionary virus, which we'll talk about more later on this list. However, there may actually be more to this story. You see, in some leaked Van Buren documents, which for those of you that don't know was the code name for the original Fallout 3 project that was canceled after Bethesda bought the rights to the franchise from the original creators, had some insane lore behind this new plague. In the design docs for this game, it was proposed that the plague was actually originally a genetically engineered bioweapon that the United States had developed for use against China and that the contagion had broken containment and mutated into what we now see in the game, if only for brief moments. It's interesting to think that the scariest thing in all of Fallout may actually be something that was held back from the atomic bomb drops. Fallout has had its fair share of controversy throughout its tenure as a game franchise, but one of the less well-known and controversial issues revolves around a rejected Fallout 2 perk image for the perk child killer. You see, back in the day, Fallout was a pretty hardcore franchise. In the first two games, you could kill innocent civilians, slaughter children, force droves of crying hostages into slavery, and watch torture unfold before your very eyes. At the time, this resulted in a lot of backlash from even the United States Supreme Court, especially because violent video games were a hot topic issue at the time. But even for these daring developers who put so many mature themes in their game, one symbol had to be cut from the sequel. In Fallout 1 and 2, if you kill multiple children in-game, you get a reputation that stays with you for the rest of the playthrough, that decreases your speech or reaction skills upon first meeting good and evil NPCs, and gives a random chance for bounty hunters to appear on the map trying to take you out for your evil deeds. Originally, the effect was supposed to be represented in-game by this symbol, but for obvious reasons, this was eventually removed from the game, as the designers all decided that the iconography had gone way too far. Honestly, nowadays, I think they could probably get away with this, as it's more of just a funny illustration. But back in the day, this was not a risk the Fallout devs were willing to take, especially when other similar games were getting cancelled entirely in fear of the US government intervening. In Fallout 3, at one point on your quest to get a Gek, a terraforming device created by Future Tech, a division of Vault Tech, you might stumble upon the infamous Vault 87. When first trying to enter the vault, you will notice just outside the location there are many radiation warning signs, suggesting that this vault was outputting a lot of radiation even before the bombs dropped. And if you actually try to go towards the two entrances of the vault, you will be killed immediately by the immense amount of radiation you immediately are pummeled with. Luckily though, if you make your way back to Lamplight City, a giant underground town full of children who lost their parents after they all tried to go to the surface to get help, you are told about a supposed murder pass that you can cross to get to Vault 87 from the underground. The children of Lamplight had previously explored deeper into the underground cave systems and found the vault, but the inhabitants on the other side said to turn back because they were already doomed. So if you find one of the two ways into the vault, either through a computer terminal or by fighting your way through an army of super mutants guarding the door, you eventually get to the entrance. When you first enter the vault, you are met with a buffet of mutilated bodies and corpses. And if you find one of the terminals at the entrance, you read the story of a man who slowly descends into insanity, watching his children and those around him die. 
As you make your way further into the vault, you find a host of gore bags used by the super mutants to serve other humans as food. And you find more terminals that express that many people in the vault had no idea what was actually going on at the time and were confused. Journal entries note that there were many power surges, weird experiments, and strange sounds many of the early residents complained about. And you eventually even find a terminal entry that notes 93 people have died in the vault, with 83 being listed under a strange and mysterious, unidentifiable death condition. If you manage to make your way even deeper into this twisted vault, you are met with multiple bloody handprints, scenes of horror, and finally, a room where you can find multiple testing chambers full of dead, early generation super mutants. The scientists in the vault were experimenting on the human inhabitants by dousing them with high amounts of FEV radiation, also known as the Force Evolutionary Virus, which was the virus spawned out of developing a cure for the new plague. These deadly doses had transformed many of the inhabitants into absolute monstrosities known as super mutants, the first generation of their kind with many having busted limbs, small lower bodies and massive upper bodies, and other weird disfigurements. You discover that there was something known as EEP testing going on here, otherwise known as the Evolutionary Experimentation Program, and that the male and female test subjects were being exposed to insanely high amounts of FEV radiation in order to study the effects, which turned most of the vault dwellers into asexual and imperfect super mutants. Eventually, these super mutants became enraged at the horrible testing they had undergone and led an assault against the vault, killing the remaining members. And it can even be discovered at the end of the vault that the FEV radiation we discovered outside was actually done on purpose by Vault Tech to test the effects of FEV on nearby surrounding towns as well. A truly unbelievable experiment that truly went too far. In our real world, the dangers of lead are now more than apparent, but in Fallout, things may not have been as safe. You see, things like lead paint and lead in children's toys has been banned for years now in our timeline, due to the discovery that lead is actually very, very toxic to human beings, and can cause many neurological problems which are said to be one of the main causes for the elevated crime rate in the 60s to the 90s, with many people exhibiting signs of increased aggression and murder in that period. But in Fallout, lead was never actually banned in the same way. In fact, for any players paying especially close attention, they may notice that the majority of lead they get from crafting in Fallout 4 actually comes from breaking down children's toys you find throughout the world. This suggests that many of the citizens in Fallout may actually suffer from severe lead poisoning, which would explain the irrational behavior we see from so many that also led the leaders of the world to sending us into all-out war. Could it be that the secret killer of Fallout is actually the insane amounts of lead poisoning going on in the populace? Between that and the radiation, it's hard to tell. For those that found themselves in Vault 11 after the Great War, life would have been good. That is until the Overseer announced the rules of the vault. Every year, one person inside would have to be sacrificed in order to appease the mainframe. Otherwise, all would perish in an instant. This initial announcement was met with huge uproar, and all citizens of the vault banded together and voted for the Overseer to be used as the first sacrifice. He resisted at first, but the residents were able to guess his password to his computer, controlling the death chamber as his wife's name, and he was sentenced to death. He walked his way down a short hallway and was met with a small room that held nothing but a projector and a single seat, and it was here he met his final demise. After this incident, it was decided that each year a new overseer for the vault would be voted in by all residents and later sacrificed to appease the mainframe. But this resulted in many of the vault dwellers banding together and creating blocks, that way they could team up and decide who would be chosen next. Every year, particularly hated individuals from each block would give speeches on why they should not be chosen as the next overseer, with many using their loving families and children as a way to guilt others into not choosing them. The strongest of these groups was referred to as the Justice Block, and in one year a man named Nathan from a separate block had beaten many of the Justice Block members in poker, which very much angered them. And because of the power they held in the vault, it became apparent that Nathan was most likely going to be voted as the next overseer and die. In order to save her husband, Nathan's wife Catherine decided to meet with the Justice Block and ask for forgiveness. 
but they told her the only way they would forgive is if they were all to have their way with her. And so they did for months on end, until it eventually became clear that even after Catherine's sacrifice, Nathan was still going to be voted as the next overseer. In retaliation, Catherine went on a murdering spree of multiple members of the Justice Bloc, and because of this was swiftly voted by all vault dwellers as the next overseer. Now with complete control of the vault, Catherine decided to change the rules of the simulation, instead opting to choose a random person each year to death to appease the mainframe, rather than leaving it to a vote. The Justice Bloc began to go into turmoil over the idea they may lose power, with some members arguing they just needed to wait until one of the members got the overseer job to change the rules, but it was too late, and a brawl broke out between the Justice League and other vault dwellers. Now with the majority of the citizens left dead, the remaining members vowed to never again sacrifice anyone to the mainframe, and instead all band together and die as one. But when the time finally came that the next sacrifice had to happen, the mainframe simply congratulated the survivors on using human decency and finally solving the puzzle of the vault. The mainframe opened the door to the vault and wished the dwellers the best of luck. Pure guilt and dismay overcame the remaining survivors, and they all decided to create a death pact where they all killed one another, except for one survivor, who walked out of the vault knowing every detail of the horrors that had transpired. To this day, we still do not know who that lone survivor is. Some speculate it is Nobark from Fallout New Vegas, but we will never know, and that one person may have some of the most twisted trauma in the entire series. Fallout 4 players know just how annoying the gunners and their entire faction can be at times, routinely attacking your settlements and being more of a nuisance than anything. One of the most strange things about them though is we actually have no idea where they stem from. They just kind of are here. One theory postulates, though, that the Gunners may in fact be remnants of the famous Vault 75, located under Molden Middle School. Set up specifically for children, the Vault was supposed to be a place to protect and preserve the youth, but in classic Vault Tech fashion, it was being used for a much more nefarious purpose. The children inside were being experimented on endlessly, and the scientists in the vault would destroy any child that did not perform at the utmost highest levels on each test of strength, dexterity, and intellect. This eventually resulted in an army of super soldier children that retaliated against the scientists and escaped the vault, never to be seen again. But could the militaristic and strong gunner faction actually be these children now all grown up?